see, I used to live in Oak Park on 14th Avenue between 40th and San Carlos, across the street from St. Paul, the bit, one of the biggest churches in Sacramento, big red church. And Lil Tim, known as Mozzie now, but known as Lil Tim back then, used to live on 39th. And I was like three blocks away from from my house. So he's so he in 14th of the main street. So he used to ride by my house and shit, chunk the deuces. I see him on 12th in the back street. Y'all nigga ain't got a swisher. I'll be with a couple of my P niggas and shit. We'd be walking. He'd be asking niggas for a swish or a niggas got a lighter. He had the scraper, nigga on like deuces. A white scraper on like some deuces. And we used to go to his house, his grandma's house. Be out there posted. The nigga and E. Mozzie nigga used to be there, nigga, because them niggas used to down there live together. But he used to be there. Known then as E. Monster. But he used to be there. And, you know, when niggas would be smoking and shit like that. And we used to, like, see, we used to walk through the pen and shit. Like, no shirt on and shit. It'd be a hot summer. And we'd walk to Stanford, nigga. Or, and go by Stanford, meet his weed man and shit. Like, he never used to try to get over on niggas and shit. Like, we'd give him our money and everything. He'd go in there and get the weed, come out. We'd roll up, go to the center, sit at the little bench, be really smoking and shit, chilling, just doing regular shit. And then walk back to his house, and then, you know, niggas be still just chopping it up, and niggas are split from there. But, like, I could say, like, the type of person he is, like, from then... And, like, you don't too much change, like, as far as, like, money and all that shit. That's different. But you don't too much change, like, the real person you are, blood. But he always is, like, a popular nigga. Now, I'm not saying even, like, this don't have nothing to do with no street shit. This is just him as a person. Like, he the type of nigga, like, when we used to be at a park, like, we'd be at the big park or we'd be at the community center chilling. The old community center. And, like, he'll walk up and, like, he'll just come out of nowhere. And you feel me? Niggas will be looking and then he'll be, nigga, what's up? Nigga, woo, 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 and all that shit with this little slang, little talk. You feel me? Nigga, niggas will be, he'll be, nigga, talking this shit. Nigga, we run up on that nigga from the, nigga, from the fag, nigga. On my mama, nigga. And it would be that, you feel me, and nigga, we'd just be chilling and shit, like, I could say he had, I could say he had a lot of influence on, on little niggas, even then, bro, cause, like, he just had that persona, like, he the type of nigga, like, it's them type of hood niggas, like, when you riding down the street on a bike, and then, like, and he used to rap back then, though, it wasn't hella popular or nothing, but it was like, he was like the little hood celebrity and shit, so, like, just to hear a nigga in your iPod and type of nigga and you'll be riding a bike and when you actually seen the nigga, you'll be like, nigga, what's up with it? Little niggas and shit. You feel me? And that nigga instantly hunk the horn, chunk the dose, nigga. That's why I used to be chilling with niggas, smoking with niggas. Cause like it was like that probably meant a lot to that nigga. Like just to have like some little niggas like fucking with his shit. And just to be in his hood and know his nigga, his little some little niggas that be around, fuck with him. Even though them niggas always knew, nigga, I was from the north, nigga. And, but I grew up in Oak Park, but they always knew, like, this nigga always saying other shit. Like, he ain't on none of that shit that we be yelling. And that nigga really be rapping his shit. So they respected me differently. But, like, but he used to always be staying in school to little niggas he see and shit like that. Be walking down the street. On 8th, anywhere he be walking and just be out and about. But, like, June, like, used to be around us. Like, June used to live at my house on 14th Avenue. That's my blood cousin. He used to live with me, and we used to go to Johnson, high on Johnson High School. But it was a time he lived on 29th Street in Utah in the gardens. And that nigga had his studio over there. But, like, we started on 14th Avenue with, like, with yard sale mics and all that shit. And my grandma used to steal our computer cord and all that shit. And, but, like, as time went by, he started getting more equipment. 
but he started making beats from a nigga named Jay Wells from G Parkway. Put him on making beats and shit. And I forgot what little group Jay Wells was part of, but that's how June started even making beats. We never even took him serious. Me and my brother, because he used to work, he used to like working on mopeds and all that type of shit. So when that nigga came out of nowhere, like, y'all niggas trying to rap, like, we already fucked around. So we didn't know he was on the rap, but he, nigga, we start hooking the shit up and used to use mixed craft and all that shit. This before we even came out with a group, we was just making hella songs and dissing each other and all the shit. And and then that's when we formed Jack Boys. Jack Boys 10-2. And that was me, nigga, and my brother, shoot shit rich, nigga. Lucky Mackin, nigga. And June, really, them was the rappers, but Kata, nigga, Buddha, nigga. Free Eddie Mob, nigga, all that shit. Yeah, but it was only us three really, like, four really rapping. Like, kicking this shit off. And then the other homies, like, came about and shit. You feel me? Baka and all that shit. And, you know, JJ Mackin, you know, RP Tez and Hef and shit like that. But... And that's when we was gradually made it to CV Circle and was just pushing music out of that shit. Just making music, making music, making music, you know? And then, you know, just, and then bitches start coming in the parts when the pimping, pimping shit just start taking off in my area, like just, you know, just like not even too long ago. You feel me? And, Money start coming about, and then, you know, niggas, bitches start, you know, shit start happening, niggas start breaking them and all that shit. Then, from 2000, that was like 2011, going into 2012, like 2011, you know, niggas start breaking up and shit. June went his own way. Niggas start going their own ways, and niggas still was fucking around, but June always kept a studio. Always kept a studio. That nigga always had a studio. And that's when he started fucking with Poppy, like 2012 and shit like that. Chief Keith era and all that shit. And and, and that's when he started really being around Poppy and, and being around Snubs and them niggas and shit. And nigga eventually started making... Started, but before all that, like... Tim was making hella songs and shit. He had mixtapes. That nigga name is he had hella names. Timmy the Tour Man. That nigga used to call himself motherfucking Eyes Eye, all kind of shit. He always had hella just different names and shit. And like and you could tell like he was rapping like on like some garage band type shit off of iMac or something. Cause the quality was like was was not the best at all, but he he always just rapped, period. But eventually he ended up meeting June and shit. But before, but that nigga, like I said, they made a song called Tongue Ring Bitch. And that was Tater Kid. That was, and they, and it was one of them hard ass beats. Like when June played it to us, we like, blood, we need to get on this. And long behold, he ended up making a song and Tater Kid on it. And he like, I want to put Tim on it. Ooh, ooh. It was one of them beats that was hard, like, blood. We, nigga, you was supposed to say that for the team, nigga. And then Tim got on in that shit. And, and like, it was funny because, like, when we heard his verse, like, him being just, just him being, like, the way he is, we was just laughing, like, this nigga crazy. He only him would say some shit like this. He was hard. It was hard though, but it was just funny. Like, but he was still like in that, you know, just trying to, trying to just. It wasn't nothing like just super thought out. So it wasn't just hella hella hard. But it was like just some regular shit. But it was just funny. His his, his shit always was like funny, stood out and shit. But then they end up. He and June end up linking with Poppy and shit after nigga and niggas fall out of Jug Boy shit. Niggas fall out. But we used to have the functions lit, nigga. Sack know this, nigga. Functions lit. Jack Boys, nigga. On my mama. At least 
two, three summers, nigga. Lit. Slapping, nigga. Everything Jack Boy. That's how I th he knew of that, nigga. Tim knew of that. He heard them beats. He knew of that. This is old June on the beat. When this when he was had when he had the tag, this must be the business. And he had his brother on a tag before all that shit. You know. But niggas fell out and shit, you know. Money, it's not even money, shit, just bitches and shit, just distractions. More, more than the less, focus on the music, and you know he end up like being around Poppy and shit, and them niggas start linking, and they and he he Poppy was the thing though at the time, like he had all the music. He was like getting the slappers and making all the music and shooting the videos and shit and talking shit and. All that shit. And then he just start going to jail and shit. And then, then he start linking with Tim and shit. And that's when he was making the headshots and all them other little songs. All them other songs they was making. And he starts, you know, producing them and shit. But that's, but that's when his buzz start kicking off. When June start, when June fingers start getting on them knobs and... Under his production, that's when that's when Tim started making a name for himself. Like outside of his hood and all that shit. But like they shit like they 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 them niggas getting into it really nigga it just gotta be like some money shit. It is some money shit. You feel me? Niggas ain't niggas winning. Seeing eye to eye, just, you know, every time money coming away and just things like that. Because that's how, you feel me? It's, the same, it's like a history of pizza soaking, like the same thing. Like, we all kind of fell out about. It wasn't just money for real, but, like, money played a part because bitches came around when niggas start trapping and getting money. But even though it's it, it's a little different because, like, the music start making money, but but money ultimately, like, is what brought niggas apart. And personal feelings, whatever. Because this shit, the only person we don't hear from is June. Like, talking about, the, like, his, his, just to hear the side of the story. You feel me? Like, everything's a lot quiet with they story on what really happened. On like, but I know I've seen a video couple of years ago in Texas and E. Mozzie was coming at June and saying he was sneak dissing on songs and all that type of shit. But if that's the case, like what made him feel like that? That's what I always answer. That's what I always ask myself. Like what made him feel like that? If that if if E. Mozzie felt like he was sneak dissing on songs, but what made June feel like he had to feel like that? So what's a lot of unanswered questions. And, you know, and me knowing June how he is, like, he is still, he could steer away from shit and don't, you know, and probably, and, 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 and hold on to that, you feel me, and, and just, and just do his own thing like he had been doing, because you ain't been hearing no June, no Mozzie on no June beats and all that shit. And that nigga been on that nigga been on uh YouTube beats. JP Bangs and all that shit. Shout out to them niggas, but I'm saying, like he had his own production team, nigga. You you had your own production. A person you kicked it off with. You feel me? And you know. But it's a lot of just unanswered questions. Like, where is Nani Blanco? Like, she should be getting pushed. Like twin Mozzie and them had some slap. He had like a slap, a couple slaps, man. You know, it, it's it's just it's just a lot of unanswered questions, and especially Nani Blanco. Like a cut, like two years ago, she was kicking up a lot of dust. I know she be going to jail and all that shit, but she was kicking up a lot of dust, and. At a time, I felt like he was going to promote that. 
like come in and be like, okay, like you proved yourself or whatever. Cause she was kicking up a lot of dust. But I don't know, man. It just be, it just be funny. You feel me? On the outside looking in, it just be a lot of like misdirection on 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 what the fuck is going on. But I know, like. Like, them niggas just don't see eye to eye, man. The business, it wasn't right. You feel me? Niggas, egos and all that shit. That's, but yeah, man, moving along. Look, see, even, I even got a story of, like, CML. Like, back then, that nigga used to always be in Arden Mall. I even met this nigga. That's the first time I met this nigga it was in Arden Mall. And I had a hat. I used to call myself Lil Rich at the time. It said 10 2 Lil Rich on the back of my hat. And that's the other time he was funk, like getting into it with the live wire niggas going at him on YouTube and all that shit. And this nigga asked me, like, I just came out the store. I've seen the nigga. But, like, these is niggas we hear of and shit like that. So, they, like, these niggas is regular niggas to me. Like, these, like, they just regular niggas to me. Like, after seeing niggas and hearing niggas, like, Knowing who they are and shit already, like they regular niggas. To people that that already know of these niggas, you feel me? But so, but he, but he start he started talking with me and shit. And we like, and he talking like that. He's like, did I have to say fifty rich? He know I didn't say fifty rich, but he asked me that, and I'm like, nah. And then we start talking about that shit, and he was like, yeah, because them niggas, you feel me? Them little liar right niggas be coming out here, you know. Trying to run shit and woo, woo, woo. But I'm thinking more like it was like some music shit and shit. Other than, even though, like, they got into whatever his baby mama and shit like that, and he said he wasn't with her and all that shit. But, like, really, like, musically type shit, that's why I, I took from it, like, because it wasn't like no street shit going on. So I took it as like some music shit. The niggas trying to come out here and run shit and all that shit. And he this this something he probably don't remember, but nigga, you that nigga had like black, yellow, green, gold, all kind of chains on that day. And when I went outside, I seen him driving by that nigga was in the bins and it was fucked up in the back. The back of the bins was fucked up. So that nigga, he would remember that. But, like, these is niggas I, like, had encounters with. I had a couple encounters with that nigga, so, like, I can kind of say a little bit, like, who he was as a person. Like, he was he was cool when I met the nigga. Shook the nigga hands multiple times. It never was, like, no funny shit. Nigga really greeted nigga and all that shit, and niggas be talking and shit, so I, I, I respected him, like, as like as a regular as a man, you feel me? Like okay, this nigga, you know, he ain't talking no bullshit. He ain't acting hard or none of that funny shit. It was just just regularly chop it up about ra about random shit. And I was like a teenager at the time, so but he probably don't even remember that. You feel me? Because that nigga, he he know who I am. He know for of who of me, but he probably don't remember that because niggas meet a lot of people. But I'm a nigga of remembrance. Like, I remember a lot of shit. But I just thought, like, like he kind of had a good point with, like, the live wire shit. Because cause that's when he was, like, because he was popping. At, like, back then, he had his own shit going on. Like, he was, like, kind of the little music scene that we had a little bit. Because they was doing the most numbers out of everybody. At the time, 30,000 at that time was something big in 2011, 2012, 2010 and all that shit. 30,000 and all that shit. That was big. Niggas wasn't doing none of that really, man. So them niggas had a, had a, you know, already had a little buzz. So I can kind of see like him like feeling some type of way about like just the whole Mozzie shit. And I feel some type of way, but like, because he had King of the City, all that shit. 
So that just goes to tell you, like, he, he that's what, that's, he was on some T.I. shit like I'm holding the crown. Like, unwritten. Like, no, like, crowning itself. You feel me? But, but pimping is, because cause Tim used to pimp too. He wasn't the most successful pimp. But Lav was was a successful pimp. That's how he that's how he got that's how he got money. That's how he was having money. Niggas knew of him because he was having money. I don't know about like him other than that. Cause he older than me. So as far as me know my knowledge, like just knowing about him pimping and shit. He a pimp, he got a bands and all that type of shit. But I knew Tim was trapping too. But he wasn't as successful as a pimp as Lavish D. So Lavish D had a little more clout going a little. He had way more clout back then. I'm going I'm to say that. Because he just, he, he, he was going places. Money take you places. He was in places, meeting people, new people and shit. But Mozzie is a, is a more successful rapper than Lavish D. So that's the difference. But I think Lavish D want to be the best at everything. Like pimping, the best street nigga, the best rapper, all the shit. Which ain't nothing wrong with that. But he still have, you know, time to prove himself. But, you know, he missed out a lot of time, man. It was a big gap. He was a big gap in the game, and he got left behind. You feel me? But I give him to him because he could hold his own. You feel me? Like, he make Sack look good, too, in his own way. Because he go places, and, nigga, they standing on business wherever they go, him and his niggas. Like, if something happened to a Sack nigga, that make the whole city look bad, nigga. Anything happened to any sack nigga outside of Sacramento, rappers especially, nigga, that makes sack look bad, nigga. They gonna block them Sacramento niggas. They ain't gonna break down the gang structure like we do, nigga. They don't give a fuck about that. They gonna block he's from Sacramento. You feel me? So, so I give it to him for that. Like, that, that, and that's on some street shit. Just some regular real nigga shit. You got to give a nigga his credit. Like, that's what make me look at the city differently, like, just about what's going on. Because it's, it's a lot of outside eyes. So anything that look bad in the city make the whole city look bad. As a whole. But that's my, you feel me? My small story, you feel me? Part one, man.